Last season, the Giants defied expectations and had a magical season. They even capped it off with a little bit of a playoff run. But did they do enough in the offseason to sustain that type of success in 2023? Let's go ahead and discuss. And what's crackalacking? It's your boy Broshmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice beautiful football uh discourse you maybe notice like a little redness right here that's because it's wearing my blue lens glasses which i'll probably put on later in the video but the giants they are next on our deep dive series as we're going to go over the coaching staff the scheme we're going to look at the roster and then i'm going to give you my projection my prediction for the giants in 2023 so let's go ahead and start with the coaching staff as we return brian day bowl after a magical first year as head coach for the new york giants also with him mike kafka and Don Wink Martindale. And let me tell you, this offense overachieved like no other. This defense overachieved like no other. Am I saying there's no talent on that roster? No. When we get into it, we're going to see some talented position groups. However, they definitely defied the expectations. And we could credit Brian Dayball with a lot, especially with the development of Daniel Jones. But the biggest question probably going to go into next year is Daniel Jones more than a Derek Carr type. That's going to be the biggest question. But Brian Day Bowman came in here. Uh, if you're expecting scheme, like it, it was kind of weird last year. It really was. He typically like based on what we saw with the Bills, we we're like we're ready for this pro spread, especially with Mike Kafka coming from the Eagle or coming from the Chiefs working under Andy Reid. We expected uh, a bit more spread, but what we got was a team that really wanted to run the football because they have an exceptionally talented running back and hopefully they still do. <laughs> But uh, they became a very run first team. They used a lot a lot of heavier sets where there was like 12 or 13 personnel. They got a, uh, they really got a lot of their tight ends involved. That's why we had the uh, the, the rookie emergence of a uh, Daniel Bellinger out of uh, San Diego State. He, he really looked the part. Now they add Darren Waller to that. So I think maybe we still expect much of the same, especially if you have questions at the receiver position because they have a ton of names but there really ain't any stars in that receiver group uh re regardless I, I really like what they did offensively they you they again ran the ball uh a lot on first down and worked that into play action they got uh they got the rollout game roll uh working with daniel jones because he He's Vanilla Vic, baby. He is Vanilla Vic. I, I just really liked a lot of what they did last season to really set up uh, success for the offense. And Brian Abel, former OC of the Bills, he worked under Bill Belichick, uh, Nick Saban. And to be fair, like uh, Kafa came in and not much was going to differ in terms of how the blocking scheme would look. These are two guys that are coming from schemes that like and like that like man that man up blocking the uh whether it's a, like a gap scheme pin and pull uh trap blocks of that nature so that was the the biggest question was in terms of the personnel and how how often would they attack uh downfield as uh, you can make a case Daniel Jones didn't entirely do that a ton last year as he was uh, checked down Danny. I mean, well, I mean, looking at what what was his average depth per target? No, that can't be right. Six and a half. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was pretty darn low. But let's talk about Don Ma uh, Martindale. He's, he's a legend in the NFL. Uh, he was formerly the ravens dc the guy has worked under rob ryan he's worked under dean pease and a lot of what he does uh schematically resembles that he's got an attack in three four he likes to pl uh play heavy man uh coverage and he blitzes a hell of a lot i think the giants had the highest blitz rate last season with like 39 point something 
but uh and he, he will he has no problem saying telling his corners hey cover zero don't get beat and we saw we saw a bit of that you know for better or for worse last season but i i, I definitely thought that the defense outperformed their expectation so from what we saw last season is this sustainable are they contenders is this a team that that is kind of a one and done in the playoffs and they go back to what we thought they were a team that's still kind of rebuilding well i guess let's go ahead and take a look at the roster but first i want to give a shout out to underdog fantasy thank you for being the sponsor of today's video underdog fantasy is currently one of the most premier fantasy betting apps and they got a best ball tournament with 15 million dollars in cash prizes so if you sign up at underdog fantasy using promo code bro schmo they will match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars remember my friends when you sign up use promo code bro schmo and they will match that first deposit up to a hundred uh dollars they got a lot going on at underdog fantasy they currently have a big one of the biggest best ball tournaments going on and best ball is one of the funnest ways to play fantasy football but it's not just football they got a variety of other sports but if you do bet bet responsibly let's go ahead let's go over my starters real quick for the offense and of course i got the big question there does saquon barkley play and that's going to be huge and we'll get into that in a little bit because i'm more fascinated with daniel jones because truthfully i wasn't a danny dimes believer i wasn't i wasn't and i'm still kind of not i made the reference to is he more than a Derek carr i don't know if he's gonna be good enough to get this team over the hump i mean just looking like statistically at him uh analytically last year uh, like, okay, the adjusted please, completion percent really good, 80%. But, like, this dude was was working underneath. You got to pull back to that average depth of target at 6.5, one of the lowest in the leagues when it came to big-time throws. Only 8 for the whole season. 21 turnover-worthy plays. So, it wasn't always ideal. It, re it really 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 wasn't i mean we could go take a look at the depth of target actually let's take a look at uh the concepts uh because again this this was a team heavily used play action uh did quite a bit on screens actually man daniel jones was pretty pretty solid on them screen plays but more importantly the depth this was a team that didn't or i don't want to say didn't attack downfield daniel jones didn't necessarily attack downfield only 26 attempts all last season regular season and playoffs included only 26 attempts down field and really when he was throwing it from anything further than 10 yards it was iffy at best on those throws he had two tutties five interceptions 10 turnover worthy plays that's where he got careless he wasn't seeing guys uh maybe over the top or underneath really he was at home throwing it nine yards or shorter and it's not even to say he was that success like when he did attack deep i thought he was relatively successful like six big time throws uh it went 10 for 26 but 359 yards that's really solid like i want to see him attack downfield more often and more confidently to really add an edge to this offense but you could also dare say maybe they did have the playmakers last year and you would be correct they didn't necessarily have the best playmakers but it's not like they added much via free agency as you could look my starters here for uh, a wide receiver darius slayton fine vertical target really he is a fine vertical target and then you got uh, Isaiah Hodgins, who's more of a possession receiver, maybe a jump ball guy. He was actually really good at the contested catch last season, 66.7%, a very good number there. But they add Paris Campbell. And I think specifically they add Paris Campbell because they needed somebody who can create after the catch 
Uh, they kind of wanted Wandale to be that guy, and he, I mean he's coming off the ACL, so that it, it's rough. It's rough. You can't expect him for the beginning of this year, uh, though you probably probably can. But uh, bring in someone who can help uh, if he is not ready day one or week one. Excuse me. Then bring in Paris Campbell, who just kind of had a breakout season. I thought was a wise move. The, the sucky thing is. Oh yeah, this th this cat has been often hurt as well. But he had 13 forced missed tackles last year on 63 receptions. That's pretty darn good. Uh, they also add. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the pure depth here. They also add Jamison Crowder, who's just solid depth. Solid depth. Good depth slot wide receiver. But I mean, you got Sterling Shepard there, who you could argue is just another slot wide receiver. And I mean, he just hasn't been the same. Like he just really hasn't done much of anything the last few years. Uh, the Jalen Hyatt pick was huge though. You get this speedy over the top. That tells me this team definitely wants to tack downfield much more than they did last season. I really like that addition. The question is how do the all these cogs uh, come into place? Like how, how is this all going to work? We could take a look at some of the other uh, guys they have on the roster. I'm not going to lie to y'all, man. Like uh, I th really think oh, it's going to make me scroll over. Here we go. Uh, Bryce Ford Whedon was a great pickup. And as a UDFA coming out of West Virginia, didn't have the most sure, like he's got highlight like, catches, but doesn't have the most consistent hands. He had a ton of like bad drops. Like you could go to the West Virginia Pittsburgh game that opened the year. His drop resulted in the game end in pick six. Uh, but a freak athlete, great build, very fast. So it's like another guy that can attack deep and you love to see it, but like there is no immediately and they just added cole beasley lulz uh another slot guy but you, you gotta admit man there, there there is no star currently here for daniel jones but they have got they have Darius slayton jalen hyatt he can attack deep you got a good contested catch guy and isaiah Hog, uh hoggins um Wandale, he can be an after the catch threat as well as a vertical threat paris campbell another guy that's very good after the catch so it's like they have parts they have the makings of something just no elite alpha but they do bring in darren waller so it's like okay okay is this team obviously they bring him in as more of this receiving threat someone who could even play the like a, as a big slot so i still think we're gonna see some heavier sets because like yeah i think that i think this offense is gonna move depending on how the run game is faring but uh i mean we, we could quickly mention some of the depth there they have at tight end as i think bellinger is gonna see a ton of snaps as well as he's this more um very good receiver and i think he's coming up as a blocker uh lawrence uh is a kager former georgia wide receiver now playing tight end they brought in tommy sweeney uh yeah that's really all to talk about there but th this for all intents and purposes this passing game will be totally influenced by how well they can run the ball or at least stay committed to running the ball so we're looking at the offense they did make uh they did go out and they got a very good uh center guy that i thought was plug and play and john michael schmitz he added a junior at the end golly jeez do it as if your name wasn't long enough uh next to him mark lewinsky if mark lewinsky is the worst player on your offensive line then you're typically your offensive line is in pretty good shape he's a, he's a good vet he's a good veteran uh but the left guard position we'll talk about it in a second that's kind of the position battle we'll be looking at but then uh andrew thomas one of the best tackles in football and then evan neal you're kind of hoping has that that andrew thomas leap in year two as we saw andrew thomas struggled a lot during his rookie year he got better during the like the last stretch of his rookie season and then emerged as a uh, very good tackle 
Evan Neal, like there were glimpses, but for the most part, it was more hiccups than actual like promise. So, and Evan Neal was my tackle one in the 2022 class. So I'm hoping, and I'm fully expecting him to come out and play much, much better. So I'm fe I'm still feeling good. The question is that left guard position. As let's go ahead and take a look. As uh, currently, our lads has Ben Breedson over there and I'm, I'm i'm just not a breedson guy i'm just not uh i'd rather go go send out the guy you spent uh a third round pick on in joshua as he as you do i'm gonna call him joshua i can't i can't even pronounce his last name sorry not sorry i got hey i got a difficult last name as well i don't expect people to say it right i i I'm not that guy. If you're that guy who gets triggered by pronunciation, get the heckles out of there. I could probably tell you more about Joshua here than you can. Uh, but he came out of North Carolina. And it's funny because they actually drafted his teammate, uh, Marcus McKeithen. So I thought that was actually kind of funny. But how did Joshua do last year? And I thought it was what you would expect from a rookie. To be fair, he didn't. I wouldn't say he saw like a ton of uh playing time just short of 300 snaps but he played as you would expect a rookie would play uh and i would say it was comparable to ben breedson who's going into i want to say year four this year right um ben breedson's going into yeah he's going into year four and to be like he's a good run blocker for the most part uh but he's just not a good pass. He's just not a good pass protector. So I'd be hoping that the guy that this regime invested in in Joshua would take that step up. Uh, they, they have Marcus um, Keith in there. I think he's good depth. I hope I'm hoping that he makes a roster over a guy like Shane Lemieux. I don't think Shane Lemieux is good. Anytime he is out on the field, he is struggled. See Gojo Gojo is back there. He knows. He knows. Matt Pert is a guy that uh, I really loved coming out of uh, UConn and just never has really been given the start and nod. Uh, I mean, shoot, he played a little over 100 snaps last year. To be fair, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't terrible, but it didn't look great. But uh, they bring in Tyree Phillips, another guy from Baltimore who will be familiar, at least with the blocking scheme. It's very, it, it's sim it's similar in regards here. There you go, bud. So at least someone who's familiar with the scheme. Uh, I think the one guy I'd want to throw out. There's actually two. Like on a side note, uh, JC uh, Hassanier, however you say it, uh, Pittsburgh. Center, he is a very good depth piece. I'm not saying hey, he's a good starter. I'm saying that's just a good depth piece to have if you need him to come in in a pinch and maybe play a game here or a game there. There are worse options out there that are currently starting. Uh, but they have Wyatt Davis. They bring him from Arizona. He's kind of just not been able to put it together after coming out of Ohio State, being drafted by Minnesota. I think he's been with a few teams at this point. I think he was actually with uh, the Giants last season. But someone that, shoot, he might get kicked to the practice squad as he continues to develop. I actually liked Jack Anderson coming out of Texas Tech. Uh, don't know, I don't think he's, you know, good enough to start, but someone maybe to keep your eye on as a potential good depth option in the future. So I'm feeling good about the offensive line and aspects is that left guard position is just a big woof. But it won't mean anything if they can't get a deal done with Saquon Barkley. I always thought, hey, if you want to keep Saquon, try to get a deal done and put the franchise tag on Daniel Jones. Because I'm not sold. He is anything more than a Derek Carr, a guy that you will keep kicking the can down the road until you kick the can off the freaking cliff. And now everyone's fired. I'm not confident that he can be the guy. So throwing a franchise tag on him, giving him another year in this system and kind of like letting her rip, having this be your evaluation. Cause like what worst case scenario, 
Do you have to pay him a lot of money? Because he ends up being really, really good. Because he has tools like that. That might not be the worst case scenario. <laughs> Honestly, I thought the worst case scenario was probably the deal. But to be fair, I think the deal works out to where they can get out of it out of two years. But now they got to figure out Barkley. Again, it doesn't mean anything if they can't get the, a deal done with Barkley. Barkley or get him to sign the franchise tag. I don't I, I the, the time has actually ended in terms of I think um uh figuring out a deal. But what do they have if Barkley do, doesn't suit up or doesn't suit up for a few games this season? Uh I, it's not encouraging. Like Matt Barreta is fine, but he's more of this long speed threat. Uh you could pair that up with they have Gary Brightwell who was kind of their big bruiser last season and that's all he is but then you have eric gray who they drafted in the fifth who i think is a phenomenal scat back this guy's a very good receiving back so you have this healthy like you have like a you have guys that fit roles in a committee backfield but outside of matt Beretta, none of them all have a proven track record in the nfl we could go deeper they did just bring in james robinson just a few days ago uh here let me move this over for y'all james robinson i actually was a big fan of J uh joshua corbin coming out of florida state the guy that kind of like got derailed by injuries uh during his collegiate career but I thought he had return capabilities. I thought he was just lightning in a bottle. Don't know if he makes the roster and might get stuck on the practice squad again or just end up being a journeyman in the league. But I think there's potential with him. James Robinson, don't know. Like Robinson, I think only makes the roster if... Hmm. Yeah, I think he only makes the roster if Saquon Barkley uh, ends up not playing uh because i don't think he, i'd put him over gary brightwell gary brightwell is a guy you rolled with last year and there's not too big of a difference between what they bring so that's kind of the biggest question for me right now because like saquon opens up this offense uh i may not me personally i may not like paying running backs big money but I mean, there's got to be a world where you, you can at least give him an Alan Lazard deal. I don't know what Saquon was looking for, but I'd give Saquon four years, 44 million. I mean, especially what he can do in the past game and be like, oh, well, he gets hurt. -da -da. It's like, listen, he is your best freaking playmaker. Like, look at looking at the squad outside of adding Paris Campbell, last year's squad, no receiver had more. Or tight end had more than four force missed tackles. Saquon had nine on receptions, nine force missed tackles. He doubled it. Like this, he he was so key to this offense last season. I just can't. I just can't. Uh, if thing something happens to Daniel Jones, I guess it's nice to bring up uh, Tyrod. Tyrod's here. He's a solid backup quarterback there. Tommy DeVito, he, not much to say there. He, he's a bit undersized, and I don't think there's any real like backup upside to him long term. I don't really think it's a guy that they developed. So yeah, I'm right now, especially with the question of Saquon, with me not all in on Daniel Jones. Yeah, I have this offense 21st to 26. That's the rank for him. Sorry, not sorry. That's just the truth. That's the honest truth. I wouldn't lie to you. But let's go ahead and take a look at this defense because I talked all that good stuff about Wink because you know, he deserves it. Wink's a great DC. But how do I feel specifically about the defense? <laughs> I know I know people ain't gonna like that. I put mid at best. This defense has parts but they are still in my opinion a bit far away so they return a few quite a few starters from last season that's great but i think they should have upgraded in parts where uh, they just didn't they just didn't so looking at the starters uh dexter lawrence one of the best interior players in the league uh my biggest question was like with a guy that big can he be a three down player and he was like 
hold my beer. And I held it and I watched him, what he did like had 70 pressures, nine sacks last year. All right, my bad, my bad. But I, I think I was still in on Dexter Lawrence around that top 20 area. But man, he, he ends up being more impressive than I thought he, he would be. Uh, I've always been a big Adoree Jackson fan. I thought he was one of the more underrated corners in the league. That I, I thought this was a cat that was always a solid number two receiver. And he, or receiver, corner. And he has been that. He really has. Like last season, uh, da, 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 da. A pass breakups. Yeah, he didn't have picks. But fun fact, uh, this defense didn't have picks. They had Deontay Banks in the draft in the first round i thought was a really good addition and a guy that fits this system you wanted a man cover corner you get a man cover corner a guy that that can play physical there and press and then can get his hand on the football i really like that addition because to be honest they have a ton of slot corners on this roster they they really do they really do uh they ab they add uh, Bobby Okariki uh, or Okariki. I forgot. I'm pretty confident. He's changed the pronunciation on that quite a few times, but he's fine. He's fine. I didn't think he was. I, I didn't think he was worth what they paid him. I th I would have rather paid like David Law, and he David Law ends up getting a cheap deal. Ends up being a steal for the Dolphins. Fins up, baby. Fins up. But like Okariki's fine. He's a good athletic linebacker, but. I don't think it was that good of a sign-in. Uh, you get uh, KT, Kayvon Thibodeau coming in year two. And it, it's funny because people want to like rag on some of his production. He had 45 pressures last year with four sacks. Again, this includes regular season and postseason. But let's take a look at the uh, at his actual win rate. Because to be fair, I, I thought that they used came on Thibodeau. It was kind of a can opener uh, in yeah, a can opener, uh, so to speak, where he would, he would open up production for those around him, whether it was like loops, uh, loops, slants, um, stunts, stuff like that. You don't want to pull up what specifically New York Giants. We'll pull up his specific pass rush win rate. All right. Um, win rate last year was. Oh, this ain't this ain't what I'm looking for. Here we go. All right. Yeah, the win rate it wasn't good. It wasn't. It was. <laughs> It, it was 9.7. You go to look at uh, true pra uh, like true pass rush, where it's like one on one, 13.2. Like Aziz was had a much better rate at 19.1. But again, Kayvon was kind of that can opener for the production around him. And I mean Aziz, I think Aziz is a really good. Uh, I want to say he could probably be like I like him as a rotation or as a mid range like edge two. Uh, I just want to see the guy stay healthy. I was a big fan of Aziz Ojolari coming out of the draft. I think I had a top 20, top 25 grade on him. Uh, where he at Aziz? But I, I just, I don't have enough confidence in him as a run stuffer. Because he, he, he is a bit lighter in the waist. Uh, oh, he got up to that 240. Which, I mean, nowadays, that's still pretty light nowadays for uh, a consistent pass rusher but but i mean i expect kt to be much better in year two and i didn't even mention xavier mckinney yet who is just probably he's the best player in the secondary i think like i feel like i say with confidence i think he's a guy that could play in the slot he could play deep and he can play in the box. Like, whatever you need him to do, he can do it. And he can do it in a very effective level. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the depth. And I, I guess I do want to start with the secondary in particular. Because uh, I said this team has a ton 
of slot corners. I know, I listed Darnay Holmes as the starter. Our lads has Cordero Flot, and I hope Flot wins. I thought Flot was a bit undersized coming out. He was mainly used as an outside corner at LSU, but I thought he was a bit undersized and probably would have to move to the slot at least early on until he put on more weight because he was also a younger player. But I love the, like, I would, he was way more productive than Darnay Holmes, but Flot did play primarily on the outside because honestly injuries and they needed him to. I would love Flot to win that job, but Holmes was kind of the mainstay in the slot last season. Uh, he had... 519 snaps in the slot so i hope flot will usurp him i'm not willing to put money on it they list aaron robinson here as a slot but i mean he was a guy that they also tried on the outside i wanted to play on the outside i projected him as a slot coming out of central florida so this feels about right they list rondarius williams here in the slot and I actually like him better as an outside corner. Like he's a guy that has to put hands on a receiver. Uh, and I feel like putting him in the slot just kind of opens him up to get in. Uh, toasted. They add Amani Ariwari, uh, who struggled after a promising year coming out of Penn State. Struggled in Detroit um, last season. Um, also was unhealthy, but struggled the last two years. So, I mean, honestly, I love that they picked up Trey Hawkins, the third. It was earlier than I expected, but out of Old Dominion, because this guy's got good size. Don't know if he makes the roster, because, again, they have a lot of guys there. They really do. But, I mean, and we know we know Banks. Uh, we know Jackson, Flott, Holmes, Robinson. So, we got five there. If they keep a six, maybe Ariwari. And Radarius Williams, Trey Hawkins. So those are probably the guys fighting for a roster spot. But uh, they add Bobby McCain, who I put him as kind of the box safety. But this is a team that will, again, they're going to be matching guys up. So I can imagine Bobby McCain being matched up in man on somebody. I can imagine him. Because he played in the slot a lot last season. He could play deep. Uh, like I said, with Xavier McKinney, he's a guy that wears many hats. He could do really whatever. Uh, honestly, instead of Bobby McCain, who's just kind of this mid player, you just kind of plug in if you have no one else, and he'll be he'll be all right. Uh, Jason Pinnock has been was someone I really liked uh, after the Jets pit. Uh, I think the Jets initially drafted him or they got him as a UDFA coming out of, I want to say it was Pittsburgh. Oh, it was Pittsburgh, right? But I thought he played well for the, yeah, it was Pittsburgh. I thought he played well for the Jets and they just let him go. And honestly, he played well for the Giants last year because again, injuries kind of forced uh, the play of some of these guys. I thought he played well. Ended up having uh, two, two pass breakups. Oh, uh, I mean, he was active against the run nine uh, defensive stops. Uh, Nick McLeod, who they list in PFF as corner, but the guy here is safety. And that's, but I mean, he, he McLeod, I think, is more of a more of a safety. He kind of had to play because of injuries last season. But I, I mean, honestly, his best games, I think, came when he was either playing i th i thought playing in the slot or playing in the box i think he's a good box safety but i mean he actually had some impressive out ins uh gets indianapolis i'm skeptical but i mean that's kind of cool a guy that can wear that many hats for your squad i think that's solid they have dane belton who they uh drafted uh two years ago out of iowa who's more of a disciplined zone guy so i'm kind of curious uh if he even makes the roster you might be like oh wow what do you mean he might not even make the roster it's like he wasn't good for them last year and i don't think he's good for a wink martindale defense so I think he's a good, he could be a cut candidate 
after uh after training camp in the preseason i i'm just gonna throw that out there uh, some of the other guys uh they drafted jarvarius owen out of uh houston uh, i'm pretty sure isn't jamon uh green no 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 he's the michigan guy right michigan corner yeah 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 decent size very physical actually he fits the scheme perfectly michigan likes to play a lot of man uh but Owen's fine. Like I, I expect him to be more of a practice squad body. So it's gonna be very interesting. Is Gojo in here? I thought I heard Gojo. You trying to get in, dude? Here you go. All right, let's just go ahead and move to the linebacker uh, portion. Uh, they took a big hit with Jared Davis uh well it was like two days into otas and he ends up they ended up losing him for the season so uh micah mcfadden is gonna step up after playing i think about 400 snaps last season uh and i really want him to be used a much more as a blitzer than they did last season they only had him like he okay he played 435 snaps uh but he only came in as a pass rusher on 45 snaps last season, but he had six pressures and two sacks. That's a good rate. Keep it up. Keep bringing this guy in as a blitzer because I don't think he's good enough right now to be someone you can use in coverage. Uh, what do you get? What's, what's the size at currently right now? Ah, see, he's still at 232 because I was going to be like, I don't even know if I want him in the run game. But, yeah, because he's not that middle guy. But to be fair, what do they have? They don't really have a lot of meaty guys. Like uh, Darian Beavers. I believe uh, he's like a 245, 255. He's up 255. So that's good. That's someone who could maybe come in and uh, I remember him being lengthy. Because uh, I think Cincinnati used him as a pass rusher. But... There, cool. There's a guy that can be your run stuffer. What is Cam Brown up to currently? Uh, Cam Brown was a bit more of a project. Look, 233. Like, th these guys are going to sh typically struggle in run defense. Like, it's kind of rare uh, you get these guys that are like, s that are sub 240, sub 235 that can actually play run the run exceptionally well. Uh, so. I do think they're a bit weaker at linebacker. Uh, I do think linebacker is not that good of a squad. Though, I do want to see Micah McFadden. I just want to see him used more as Blitzer. Because he was ridiculous at Indiana. Alright. Looking at the edge group here. We talked about Kayvon Thibodeau. Talked about Aziz Ojolari. Uh, Jihad, they have Jalahad Ward listed here. And I mean, to be fair, he can play outside. Like how many outside snaps did he play last year? Oh, he mainly played on the outside. But he's also someone I think that can uh, kick to that, like, kick inside of the tackle, play like a four eye tech. So I don't know if I true. Oh, I mean, he's going to play outside. Uh, but they got O'Shane uh, Himes at an ODU a few years ago. How did he produce last season? not great yeah he, re he really didn't do much as a pass rusher wasn't even that solid as a run defender Ugh. i mean he has traits i guess you're kind of hoping ellerson smith who they uh got at northern iowa a couple of years ago might be able to usurp him but like i mean eh, I, I guess for all intents and purposes is jihad wards that guy uh they do have uh uh, they brought in Habakkuk uh, Baldonado as a UDFA, uh, and he's interesting. He's got a good body type. It's not like he's the most explosive guy, but he's got length, and I think he could be exceptionally solid. So, like, they have they have players there, but, I mean, for the most part, you're kind of hoping Aziz can stay healthy because, like, that's what you want from the rotation. You want KT, you want Aziz, you want Jihad uh, with Himes. Himes, Smith, and um, maybe Baldonado. 
They have Timon Fox here, but I, I couldn't tell you much about Timon Fox personally. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting. But I'm hoping KT just kind of explodes uh, on the interior. I actually feel really good about their interior, man. I really do. Uh, Leonard Williams, yeah, he's overpaid, but he's good. He's fine at this point in his career. Like, he provides good pass rush. I, I, again, is overpaid, but like very good, like an above average player. You're overpaying for a good player that's you know what you could do worse uh kind of talked about dexter lawrence dude's a monster uh they bring in Ashawn robinson who how did he do with the rams last year but uh you got rakeem nunez uh was that roaches who's just been a very good like very good depth player like his whole career so I, that's why I'm like uh, hesitant right now. Say uh, that Aishan out snaps him. Let's see. He only played 360 snaps last year. Like, I guess he's been a fine run stuffer. And he's got good size. But I mean, Rakeem has been really good when called like when when called upon like yeah man he, he was forced last year with injuries uh to like vita bay and and such to play a lot of snaps and he was fine he, he had 21 stops and he can get after it too 11 uh 11 pressures two sacks like Regardless, I mean, you got a good run stuffer and a good all-around player there uh, in, in Rakim and Aishan. Uh DJ Davidson's more of this versatile body type at a, that was out of Arizona State a couple of years ago. Uh, how much? I don't even know if he saw much playing time last year. Yeah, only 43 snaps. Couldn't really tell you much. Jordan Riley or Jordan Riley. Ooh, that name sounds familiar. Came out of Oregon. I don't think he played much. I couldn't. I can't really tell you. I mean, I guess like technically, I could pull up my eval on him last year, and I guess I will. All right, let, let, let's look at their only UDFA. They got Veron Butler. That's fun. That's fun. Uh, I think I obviously said. Uh, I think Jihad could get in on the action here on the interior a little bit as well if they really want to get after it. So let's see. I'm thinking. Ah, okay. Jer Jordan Riley. I actually didn't evaluate last year. And he wasn't that productive at Oregon. Only seven pressures in a sack, but he's got nose tackle size. So I guess might make the roster. He didn't test out or anything. That's wild. I had 53 guys evaluated and listed, and he sneaks in. Okay. I guess it is what it is. But all in all, uh, going back to this defense, I do think it is a bit mid right now. They have ascending parts, Aziz, AT, uh, Deontay Banks. I, f I kind of feel sad because I feel a Dory might be the next guy out. Like he's just kind of holding the place until other guys emerge. But Xavier McKinney's really good. Hopefully, like Flot could uh, beat out Holmes for the job. I imagine that's going to be a battle. Uh, and I mean Dexter Lawrence. Uh, I'm not. I may not be wild about the linebacker position. I do think like a big problem for this team was they got ran on a ton, and I still think it's going to be a problem. That's unfortunate, but that just happens to be the case. So yeah, I got them 21st through 26 terms of defense. But the thing was, I I took I wanted to take into account this team over achieved last season they did they simply did they overachieved but i don't think it was all luck i don't think it was all fluky 
I thought they had really good coaching. I thought the offense, yeah, at times maybe played it safe, but did enough to stay in the ball games last season. I don't think it's nearly as fluky as maybe some people make it seem, but I do think maybe after making the playoffs last year, this year, maybe they come a bit, a bit of that expectation comes back crashing down to earth. Uh, currently, let's see what Vegas betting odds have them at seven and a half. Let's go ahead to my projection of the New York football giants as I have them going eight and nine. So I... Uh, opposed to the Packers, who I confidently would bet the over on because I think they're seven and a half as well in terms of their win total. I'm not that confident with the Giants because, again, this was a team that overachieved, and I'm kind of thinking that they might do it again. I don't know. We'll see. But as you can, uh, I have them with like the 16th or 17th hardest or hardest schedule so to speak. So they kind of got a middle of the road schedule, but still it's a tough division with Cowboys are a good squad. Uh, you, the Eagles, former NFC champions, they're still great. And Washington, I feel like, is up and coming, man. You don't know what you're going to get with Sam Howell. Like, a lot of the parts are there for that team to be pretty good next season. So, I don't think uh, that's just a gimme either. But I have them going 4-2 and two against losing teams, but 3-6 and six against playoff teams. I think that's fair. I think this is a fair projection of the giants i at least where with how i feel about daniel jones and daniel jones could come out and just blow the pants off of me blow them off however i don't necessarily think he has the best weapons right now like he has a committee of guys that can do different things but I don't think he has any high-end guys as of right now. I don't think anyone's, no one's has proven that. Uh, if Saquon doesn't play, that's his best playmaker. They did add Darren Waller. That's a great addition, but that's one addition. Uh, I may be expecting Evan Neal to be much better than he was last season, but what if he isn't? What if left guards also just a travesty? What if John Michael Schmitz as a rookie struggles, even though a lot of us anticipate him to be plug and play? What if he struggles? Like, there's a lot of parts around him. Even if Daniel Jones steps his game up once again, that it's not an ideal, it's not the ideal uh, circumstances right now, but again the coaching is really good there so like i'm an optimist i think a i think a and a nine is a fair is fair it's fair i mean you can fight me on it it's fine i but i think it's fair uh let's go to the game by game i have them win in the opener against the dallas cowboys it's at home i have them splitting with the cowboys splitting with washington and i do have the eagles taking both games you might be like what well we we almost beat them with David Webb last season and it's like I mean well, I guess we could just jump to that listen okay so both these games are down the stretch I kind of have the the fight for the first seed pretty pretty tight so I kind of anticipate the Eagles will probably be playing all their starters be like well we almost beat them with all their starters yeah you're a gritty team but looking at paper like I don't know people are like, oh, football is not played on paper. But in this case, it's like I'm projecting. So I kind of got to project it based on all the information I have. And the Eagles are simply a better team that will probably be fighting for something at the end of the year. And I think at this point, the Giants would probably be, well, I don't think they're technically out of the playoff race actually at this point. Because uh, the NFC, I think I have, Maybe I have one team that has eight win going in. No, it's probably nine. Nine wins and you're in. So, yeah, the Giants are probably going to be fired for something. But still, at the end of the day, man, Eagles are a better team to me. I know y'all y'all had that one game where you almost beat them with David Webb. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Good for y'all. But it's like, what happened in the playoffs then? 
Like, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, for me, that's safer. And I know division teams typically play themselves exceptionally well. So it's a tough call regardless. Got y'all beating the uh, Cardinals. Losing to the Niners is the Niners at home. Niners are a really good squad. Beating the Seahawks. Haha, you coming off a mini buy though. So that kind of helps. I got y'all beating my Dolphins. Fins up, baby. Yeah. Yeah, don't say I don't care about you Giants fans. I care. Maybe I don't care about my Dolphins. <laughs> uh, losing to the Bills. Bills are a really good squad. Uh, I got y'all actually beating the uh, Jets despite them coming off a buy. So... Again, I do think this is a gritty Giants team. Beating the Raiders. Uh, again, yes. Y'all split with Washington, split with Dallas. Uh, losing to New England. They're coming off a bye. And uh, if you want to hear how I talk about New England, I think that was my last video, last deep dive or the deep dive before that. But I talked about them. Going to the bye, I don't have y'all beating the Packers coming off of your bye. Because uh, eh, Packers are a good team too. Like, and I think the Packers are actually probably more put together right now than the uh, Giants are, like, funny enough. Uh, it's just the Giants have much better coaching. <laughs> uh, I got the Saints winning because they're, they're in the playoff hunt, unfortunately. I know a lot of people really think the Saints are crap, but that's a, not a bad roster. It's, it really depends on how you feel about Derek Carr. And I think he's really mid, so they ended up being mid in my projections uh being in the rams i don't care the rams aren't that good of a team Th they're not the offense could surprise people but that defense is really piss poor so at the end of the day man let me know what you think do you think i'm just hating on the giants i don't know let me know in the comment section below that's it for the video go ahead do the youtube theme but as always until next time you be easy my friends later